Hi guys, I'm here with Hugh Bynan, the uh, global brand manager for Deep Silver, and we're looking at Metro Last Light. Uh, how are you doing today? How are you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, now, uh, the game is showing off um, sequel to Metro 2033. What's kind of happened in the story since that game? Where it is taking place? What's going on with the characters? So Metro Last Light is a, it's a direct sequel to Metro 2033. It's a brand new original storyline developed by Dmitry Glukowski, the, the author of the first uh, novel. Uh, he's worked really hard with the studio to create this new story that continues Artyom's adventures. So you pretty much pick up from where we left off at the end of Metro 2033. Cool. So uh, you're showing off the game here today, Lingos Played. Uh, what's going on in, in this specific build you're showing off? What's new? What are you showing off? So what we wanted to do with the uh, with the build today was let you play for an extended period of time, see the the narrative unfold, the story unfold, introduce some of the uh, some of the new cast of characters that you'll meet in Metro uh, in Metro Last Light. So the game picks off. You're actually playing the level Echoes, which is uh, the level we showed at uh, E3 2012. As you pick your way across the surface of Moscow through the the crash plane, and then you make your way down into the metro. You visit one of our new station cities, the theater where the remnants of the Bolshoi performance performers are, are now putting on a, a gaudy cabaret to entertain the, the metro dwellers. And from there, all, all kinds of gameplay from uh, action and, and, and stealth sections in a, in a red line uh, armored train factory. And later on, you'll, you'll experience some more survival horror style gameplay as you make your way through the tunnels of the, of the metro. Okay, cool. So, um, this game kind of takes place during a civil war. What's uh, the cause of that civil war? What are they fighting for? So, at the end of Metro 2033, uh, Artyom destroys the Dark Ones with the help of the, the Order of Rangers. They discover this uh, Soviet um, missile base, uh, D6, buried deep uh, within, the, within the metro. And now this has been discovered and word has spread around the metro like wildfire and it's rumored that it's full of weapons and medicines and supplies. So it's become this glittering prize at the heart of the metro and all of the factions who are based around extreme ideologies from the, the neo-fascists of Reich to the old school hardline communists of Redline and the capitalist Hansa are all mobilizing and vying for power to try and take control of this, uh, of this in installation. So you mentioned the Dark Ones, uh, are they back for the sequel? Yeah, we mentioned today that um, it turns out that a, that a Dark One has survived and he's going to be absolutely critical to the plot and to Artyom's story. Um, Artyom is aware that he may have committed a terrible error by de destroying the Dark Ones at the end of Metro 2033. Uh, he's sick to the pit of his, his stomach um, and maybe this, uh, this surviving Dark One offers some kind of redemption for him. So what are the, uh, according to you, some of the coolest new features in this game compared to the, the previous game? We've kind of improved across the board. I mean, I think we thought that we actually got the basic formula pretty spot on with Metro 2033, but we weren't completely satisfied with some of the, some of the actual gameplay mechanics, specifically our, our combat and some of our stealth just felt a little bit rusty in the first game. And we've worked really hard to improve those areas, much more sophisticated and robust AI. Uh, much more intuitive controls. We've obviously improved the tech and the visuals across the board, uh, and I think that's really apparent in our outdoor environments. We've added uh, dynamic weather effects and day-night cycles, and by moving the time frame on a little bit, we've we've broken Moscow out of its nuclear winter. It's not just locked in snow and ice now. There's vegetation and running water and the occasional beam of sunlight coming through the through the uh, the clouds and it's just given us a much richer environment um, that the player can experience on the on the surface so how long would you say that the adventure in this game could be well we think it's a it's a sizable single player campaign it's uh, at least as long as metro 2033 and i think compared to you know many other single player first person shooters you're going to be pleasantly surprised i think it's much longer than most other games out there so what are you doing in, in uh, terms of uh, replayability? Are you doing like some different choices in the story or side quests or stuff like that? Sure, so it kind of became discovered after Metro 2033 was released, but there was a very subtle and nuanced um, choice mechanic within the game. The game is constantly 
asking that you make choices and decisions, but you're never aware that you're making these choices and decisions as you make them. It's completely hidden from the player and the cumulative effect of all of these decisions will have a, a critical bearing on the outcome of the game. So that alone uh, will give you a, you know, a good reason potentially to, to replay. We also think there's a lot of inherent replayability within the game anyway. Many of the levels can be completed in, in very different ways, whether it's all out action or going and taking a, a more stealthy approach. There are so many secrets and hidden areas and, and things to explore. Um, we saw with Metro 2033 that our fans constantly replayed the game and you know I'm, I'm still playing Metro 2033 and, and finding new bits within the game even now. So are you taking the choices from the previous game into this uh, new game anyway? No, we actually we actually follow from the the canon ending of the first game, which mirrors the the canon and canon ending of the book. So, um, the system of choices in Metro twenty thirty three gave you the option to to save the dark ones, but it doesn't make sense for the continuation of the story. You can almost think of it as this you know impossible alternate reality of what might have happened. But it was really important for us, and you know Dimitri agreed that this would never actually have happened. Artyom would have destroyed the Dark Ones, and it makes a much more interesting starting point for this game. Uh, so how have you been able to push your tech since the, uh, the release of the first game? Well, the 4A engine, it's our, our, our in-house tech, uh, and it's just constantly evolving. It's one of the advantages of working with your own technology. If you need a feature, you, you can just adapt and work with it rather than having to use a, you know, an, an off-the-shelf piece of kit. And, you know, I don't, I don't believe there's any other engine or piece of tech out there that could render the world of Metro the way we want it. So, you know, that's really important to us. We've always tried to push the boundaries of, of technology. Um, you know, we're working with the very um, latest and highest spec PC cards and that approach to development has actually really helped the current generation uh, of consoles as well. You aim for the, the, the highest fidelity you possibly can and then see how little you need to scale back to, to get it running on the current generation. So anything that's gameplay critical, all the dynamic lighting and realistic physics and AI is all there and, and, and present in the current generation. So we're, we're incredibly proud of what we've, we've achieved with the current generation of tech, but you know, the, the PC version is, is truly next generational. Cool, so um, this game being so close to release, did the uh, kind of publishing side um, affect the game in a way when THQ kind of left it to Deep Silver? You know, it's been it's been a, a an uncertain process and a disruptive process. Um, but you know, we've we've quickly got up to speed with with Deep Silver. I think they're a, a fantastic partner for the for, for the game. So we maybe lost a little bit of development time. There's a lot of kind of paperwork and admin that has to be done in the in the background when you swap to a new publisher. But we've moved the release date back by a couple of months so that Deep Silver can you know get their marketing plans uh, plans together and give the game the support that it deserves. So I don't think it's been to the detriment of the game at all. Um, um, we're going to hit the, the, the same quality bar that we always intended. So when is it being released into our platforms? So Metro Last Light is released for PC, Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 on May 17th here in Europe. And on the seventh day, they say God rested. But God didn't rest. God left. Or perhaps died. 